Ah, the former king of the VHF and UHF cheap handheld, the Baofeng UV5R. I'm sorry, mate, but you're starting to look a bit old and a little bit out of date because we've got stuff like these. This is the TalkPod A36 Plus. Let's have a look at it today. Now, normally I do a, hey, let's do an unboxing video, but we're not gonna do that today because, hey, unboxing videos are boring. So let's do a reboxing video. We've got a talk pod. This is a talk pod A36 plus. I'll put some links in the description below to where you can check out more about this radio. This is another one of those, well, I think one of the direct competitors to the good old staple, the Baofeng radio. There's been quite a few of these that have been coming out lately. Um, you'll know, remember that I did uh, a video on the Quanchang radio. This is uh, relatively similar. It claims that it does, uh, what do we hear, uh, 144 to 148 and 430 to 440 megahertz. I have heard that this radio will also do airband as well. So we're gonna check out that today to see if it actually does, um, at least this version. We'll do some output power tests, see, if, uh, see what kind of output power we get out of it. And uh, just sort of have a bit of a look at, you know, the, the main alternatives that you can get to one of these, because the quality is actually improving on some of these. We used to call these cheap Chinese radios, but they're actually, you know, pretty good. We need to do this too. That's always a first thing that we need to do. The, uh, the TalkPod A36, let's uh, plug in a battery and turn it on. Channel Ooh. mode. Oh. Channel mode, seven. Six, five, three, one. Let's get into VFO mode. How do we do that? Without looking at the manual, that's one thing that we don't want to do. We don't want to look at the manual. You don't need to look at the manual to do these sort of things, surely. A lot of these radios are coming out with this USB-C. It is so good. It comes with a USB-C to USB-A cable so we can plug that directly in and charge the battery. It is so good to be able to see that. Um, that's one thing over a UV5R that you don't have. You can't charge this battery with USB, let alone USB-C. Um, there's a dock-in charger. This looks like something that is a little bit cumbersome. Can we actually line it up? There we go. So it tells you when you're plugged in. The other good thing is it comes with this little charger, this little USB charger as well. Um, you've got a lanyard, so you can put that on and also a programming cable, which looks fairly similar to the Baofeng ones. Looks like, I think they're all the same. They've probably all got the same sort of chipset in here for programming. So let's have a look through the manual. It looks pretty good. It is very small writing, so they probably should increase the pages and uh, make it a little bit bigger, but it's in very easy to understand English, so that's good. Um, so we've done that. We've assembled the belt clip. We've got LED indicator that tells us on the top if we're transmitting or receiving, excellent. Charging, powering on and off, we've done all that. So let's keep going and see if we can find where the VFO button is. Another important function of a radio is the ability to, ability to actually do stuff without having to go in and change, you know, a whole bunch of settings to do something very simple. This looks very similar. Um, of course, with most new radios, you, it takes a little bit of time to learn. The screen is very nice, I uh, noticed that. If we, if you press A, B, it changes this main between the two VFOs. Let's go into, I think this is, the, this is the menu button. Here we go, Roger Beep. We've got all our settings, memory channels. This is pretty cool, instructions details. If you click on this, Confirm. it gives you a QR code that you can scan for the instructions. So that's, that's pretty sweet if you don't have them on hand. I don't know what that button does. A lot of beeping. Oh, SOS button. Okay, we won't hold on that because that's probably gonna transmit something that we probably don't wanna transmit. So the first button is FM radio. So let's, while we, let's have a look here and see what we can tune in. Okay, so I'll turn that down because we're playing music, but that seems pretty, pretty good clarity on that. So that's great. Let's try and find a channel that we can listen to without getting demonetized. You can never find talkback radio when you want it. Runaways. 
with their classic track. Um, so that's Terry turned up. Bomb. That was from their. So that's turned up full volume. 1976. And uh, at the time of, of its release, that's actually pretty good. Four of the band members were 16. That's actually very good uh, quality, actually. Okay, so it looks like we've got. I think these are NOAA weather channels. So the bottom button is programmed for the the NOAA frequencies. If you want to listen to those, we don't have those here, but you can do that. There's also a very important warning here about the antenna. It says, "Do not, whatever you do, swing the radio by the antenna because it will wreck performance." All right. Um, so you don't want to shorten the lifespan of the antenna. So whatever you do, don't do that. Okay, so I finally figured out how you get out of channel mode and into VFO mode. So you hold the green button and we're in frequency mode now. So apparently this thing can do an airband. Now, did we see, let's have a look. One, 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 eight, one, zero, zero. Oh, there we go. Head to Melbourne via Latham, Latham 2 departure. Club Vice hit 8,000. Squawk now 7243. Departure's frequency 125, decimal 55. Oh wow, okay, that. That was pretty readable. I don't know if you, how well the microphone picked that up, but uh, I could understand the tower and also the aircraft there. So that's, uh, that's good. So we receive air band. Roger beep, okay. Let's, uh, let's test out the Roger beep because everyone wants to know what the Roger beep sounds like. Oh. Okay, so that's that's yeah, that's okay. Oh, oh, it's also got the Motorola squawk. <laughs> so there we go. So there's your two Roger beeps. It's got Vox, timeout timer, wide and narrow, all the standard things that you would expect from you know the equivalent one of these, or not the equivalent, but the, this is. Uh, this is what we base everything off, isn't it, these days? One of these Baofengs, that's the, uh, that's the standard. It's dual watch, but it's not uh, uh, full duplex, so but that's to be expected for a cheaper radio like this. Programming options, I think that you can download the software on the website. I'll see if it's available in Chirp. I'm not sure if it is available in Chirp to program with. So let's do an on-air test and see what it sounds like. This apparently has a one watt speaker in it, and like I've already listened to Airband briefly, but it actually sounds pretty good. So let's just see what it sounds like. Now, to do this test, I'm going to use my IC9700 in the background. I'm not going to use another handheld radio or anything like that. We're going to transmit and receive using the IC9700, and let's just see how it sounds. I'll go out of the room so that you can hear what the audio sounds like on the TalkPod. This is VK7HH testing on the TalkPod A36+. Plus. The A36 Plus testing on 146 500 VK7 Hotel Hotel. And what hotel is an A36 Plus? <laughs> it sounds it sounds like someone's actually heard. Hello, how are you, Mike? VK7 FB VK7 HH. You uh, you may be featured in a video. So uh, how does this radio sound to you? Uh, you're slightly noisy to me, but uh, but it's, uh, the audio is excellent. Sounds very good, VK7HH, VK7 Foxtrot Bravo. Okay, yeah, well I'm just sitting inside at the moment, uh, down in the in the studio, so I was just doing some on-air tests to see what it sounds like, so thank you for doing my job for me, but it sounds like, uh, it actually sounds pretty good, it's a little, uh, little portable handheld and um, it's a nice green colour and I'm sure that when the video comes out you'll be able to see how you sound. I just realised most of the noise was actually coming from the scanner. You're, you're very good signal on the... Uh, the so that's turned dialogue. all the way up. Better Volume all the way up. This cone, so. so that's interesting. But uh, no, it's a, a good signal. So there we go. That's the, uh, that's the 36 on a real live on-air test because obviously someone heard me testing it. <laughs> it's pretty loud. Like the, the speaker on this is really, really good. I had that turned all the way up for that contact just then and it was really uh, very clear, easy to understand. That might change with AM. So let's just see how it sounds with um, listening to the control tower and to any aircraft when we get something through. So just from listening, it, it gets distorted if the signal strength is a little bit low, which you know you kind of expect. 
Um, when the signal, when it's really good, and I mean, I'm only running off the little stock antenna, by the way. When the signal is good, it's actually really easy to understand. At least the tower's easy to understand. I'm So that kind of gives you a little bit of an indication. The 1327 cleared to Melbourne via Latham flight planned route, Latham 2 departure, climb by seed 8000, squawk 4271, departure frequency 125, decimal 55. Stop by Latham, land route, so Latham 2 departure, climb by seed 8000, code 4271, 12555 airborne, May 5, and request cancel. Out of my garage now, I've got this hooked up to my test monitor and I've got a length of RG223, some low loss coax that I use for testing, hooked up to the radio using my adapter kit and we're on 146.500 high power and we get 4. 9 watts, that is exactly what I would expect. Let's crank this down to low power now. Whatever that is. And we have 2.8 watts on low power. On 439, 4 watts. 4 watts at high power. And at low power, we have one and a half watts. Quick receiver test now, and that is minus That's not too bad. I don't know what squelch setting that's on. That's minus 123. So what are some other features of the radio? We'll have a quick look here through the website. You can see that uh, it comes in a variety of different colors. I got the green because the green like sort of stands out and it's actually quite nice. You can also get black, uh, which, you know, standard sort of radio. Or you can also get uh, crystal, which is this silvery color as well, if I can actually get it to, there we go, uh, silvery color. So that's, uh, that's, you know, the three colors that you can get. Actually, DTMF, we didn't test that. It's got DTMF keypad. Let's see if that actually works. Does this guy sound Australian, by the way? Zero. Zero. Eh, maybe not. Anyway, let's try DTMF. VK78HH okay, test. Oh, okay. DTMF does work. My goodness, that was loud. Okay, so DTMF works. That's good to know. TX locked at GMRS for USA market, so you can use this on GMRS as well. Um, the screen is fantastic. We talked about that. IP54 jet... Uh, water jets rated. So IP54 means that it's sealed against dust and other things and also 54, I think 54 splash proof. So um, you can run this basically, let's go and, let's, let's go and put it under the, the, let's go and splash some water on it. I'll, I'll put some B-roll of, uh, of the splashing and uh, to make sure that it actually does continue to work. Uh, the Baofeng UV5R doesn't have that, but this radio does. So that's another feature. You might drop it in the river and you can pick it back out and it should still hopefully work. Still works. Even though it does say that it's IP54, I wouldn't uh, recommend chucking it underwater because <laughs> I just did that and now the speaker's not as loud. I think it's got some water in it. <laughs> yep, so there's still water coming out of it. So hopefully that dries. But anyway, for testing purposes, that's what happens. Frequency mode. So I think it's I think it's still working. I'm improving the audio. 
I think it's back to what it was supposed to be before. Word of warning, don't put your radio under the water unless you're doing a review and it's for testing purposes like I did. So what are my thoughts on this radio? Well, um, compared to these other radios, which I suppose are the direct competitors, if you're going to choose out of these three, you've got you've got some choices to make, I guess. The Quan Chang radio, I saw some that were going on AliExpress for like, I think they were $15 or something. So that's super, super cheap. There was some th- issues with AM reception and some, you know, other little quirks with this. It has, uh, this has USB-C charging. This has USB-C charging. So that's the same. This can receive slightly wider frequencies. Whether it's effective on that or not is another question. Um, so if you take that out, because obviously that's probably the cheapest of the lot, these two are roughly probably around about the same price. I think this is about $50 on Amazon and there's a link in the description below to this radio. Uh, the Baofeng radio, you know, these sort of vary in price, but, you know, anywhere between $25 and $40. If you're going to choose between these two, like the Torque Pod's a little bit bigger. Um, I do like the look of it and the fact that this, the best thing about it is the screen. Like, look how easy that is to read. It's also got the dual, the dual watch as well. Like, compared to that... Like, let's just compare the two. Like, just even in the camera, just seeing that, I don't think I'm going to have any issues, um, you know, reading this screen. It's actually really, really nice. The audio before um, <laughs> before I went and put water in it sounded fantastic. Um, but, you know, uh, it's on-air transmit audio is a little bit down in level, which is a problem with a lot of those Chinese radios. It, it may or may not be a problem depending on I haven't listened to my audio because I couldn't hear myself, but it just sounded to me like it was a little bit low. But um, great little radio. It looks very, very rugged. I like the, you know, the belt clip and everything else. They're just improving all the time with their designs. I think this is a fantastic radio. Again, if you want to get one of these, then there is a link in the description below. Maybe the TalkPod radio is not for you and you're more interested in one of these two radios. If you are, then there is a link to a playlist where I've done other reviews and information on these radios that you can go and view. Please check them out on my channel. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe because subscribing means that you will get uh, notifications when I release new reviews and new videos.